Hey guys, this is a video on how to diagnose and replace your horns on a 2009 Infiniti G37 XS. I will start with the diagnosis first. If you have a horn not working, then first thing you want to check is you go into your battery cover here. Uh, that'll already taken off. Take off this fuse cover here. This fuse cover. And there will be a 15 amp fuse. Right beside this 40, that is the horn fuse. You want to check that, and there is a horn relay here as well. So you want to check that as well. So it's it'll be one or the other. To check the relay, you simply want to you want to disconnect your horns, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, and hit your steering wheel. If you hear an audible click coming from this relay, then it's most likely working. If you don't, then you probably have a bad relay. Um, if this fuse is blown, then just simply replace the fuse. I will show you how to where to find your spares in a second here. So in my case, anyways, this horn fuse wasn't even in. Somehow the horn on the driver's side over here was still functional. There's a horn in here that was still working, but the horn that's under here wasn't doing anything. Not sure why that is the case, but here's the spare fuse location. Let me grab my light. Okay, so I got my light. So you will see a fuse panel in your driver's side here. It's a fuse panel right by your e-brake pedal, this little panel here. So you just simply push down this, it pops out like so. Then on here, you'll see there is a, a 10, a 15, and a 20 amp spare. <clears throat> so right here, there was a 15 here that I used for the horn and a 20. So you can use any one of these, but it recommended a 15 on the fuse panel over there. So I just put a 15 in there. That solved my problem. The other horn immediately started to work. So I just clip that back in and you're good to go. Um, so now I will show the horn removal process. So first thing you want to do, open your head of course, and you want to Take this plastic panel off. So there'll be one, two, three, four, five kind of hidden under here. Six, seven 10 millimeter bolts you have to take out. And then one, two, three, four, five, six clips you can take out with a simple tool like this. Just a little cheap clip remover came from eBay, I think. Works amazingly well for this. Or you can use a flat blade screwdriver. Doesn't matter, but I prefer to use that. So, to take this out, there'll be two pegs back here. You can see mine's a little broken, but it's not a big deal, just a, just a cover. So there'll be two pegs. You can see them. Hard to see in there, but there's a peg there and a peg there. So you wanna slide this back. So we can do this while holding the camera here, and it'll pop out like that. Won't pop out as easy as this one because I already had this out. And you simply just want to work it out. It'll slide forward. Just wanna, might have to bend it a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Want to simply, might just stick your hand under here like I'm doing. Just trying to clear that this hood release here. There we go. It came out, and then this plastic piece will come out. I'm gonna set that off to the side for now. I'll just put it over there. And then your factory horn will be right here. So there will be another 10 millimeter bolt. You just want to use a box end wrench to get that off. Take this off. It's a little, little tedious, but it does come out. Take your factory horn off. And then you want to just put in your new horn like so. Just ground connection, positive connection. You can test it, but I didn't bother because it's either going to work or it's not. I don't, I don't know if horns will fry. I've never had one fry running the wrong way. They just don't, they just usually work or they don't work. So you can test power if you feel like it. Uh, the easy way to do that is to take your positive black here and put it to some grounded point like an engine or like the engine. You can use a test light or a multimeter like I did and test the engine. See if you get 12 volts when the horn activates and you're good. 
And so for the other horn, this one is the tricky one. That's the easy one. You'll see why this is the tricky one in a second here. So let me just get a light so you guys can see a little better here. Wherever I put my light. Probably still in here. Yep, it is still in here. Grab my light. This is the very tricky one. So, first of all, there will be a 10 mil right here. You want to take out. And then you want to just use a flat blade screwdriver or a... You can't really use plastic pry tools. Don't really work. This is very tough plastic, especially when it's cold out. So flat blade screwdriver works the most. You won't really damage that too much. It's not a big deal if you do. Um, anyways, so once you got that 10 mil out, you want to take, there's a clip, there'll be a clip here, you want to take out with your flat blade screwdriver or clip remover, that's easy enough, and there, there was one there, but it just came out one day and it's never, never bothered to put it back, so it doesn't really matter. Anyways, so, let me just adjust here, not sure how, not sure how well you can see in there. But there's that little bracket right there, right at the tip of my finger. That bracket is what the factory horn will be attached to. You want to take your connectors off. You'll have to sort of monkey your hand in there a little bit. Take those factory connectors off. And once you're done that, or what's the easiest way to do that? So actually, you want to undo the bolt first before you take the connectors off. Because it'll be a pain to try and get those connectors off while the horn is still in there. So you want to just undo the bolt. So what you'll need for that is this, a small wrench, small ratchet with a socket extension and a 12 millimeter socket on it. Once you got that, you'll need a, this is a 10 mil, but you need a 12 mil box end wrench. You want to, you're going to have to monkey your hand up in here. You want to put this There'll be a bolt behind here. Can't really see very well. There'll be a bolt behind here. You want to try and get your wrench on. It's going to be very difficult to get on there, as I found out. Um, once you get that on there, you have to hold that and undo it with this at the same time. And is, I'm not going to lie, it's very difficult to get that out of there. Once you get it out, it's not a big deal though. So once that's out, the horn will fall down, and it can easily get at the factory connectors, and just disconnect your factory horn install your new horn i'm just in the process of doing that just thought i'd make this video because not very many other ones on youtube as far as i could find just want to do that and bolt your horn back up it's not a big if you had to bend this bracket a little bit to get it out it's get it in or out it's not a big deal it's just flexible metal so it's, it's not going to hurt anything if you bend it a little bit um once you get that up there nice and tight you want to just give her a test and make sure it works. If not, then you want to swap your connectors around and then it should work fine. Um, once you've done that, it's once you've verified both your horns are working, this horn up here and that horn in there, you want to put your fender wall back together. Um, yeah, if you need something to hold this back while you're working on it, I just use some bailing wire attached to the rim here. It's not going to really hurt anything but it works really well to hold this back. You can take the tire off if you need to, but I didn't bother doing that just for easiness sake because taking a tire off is a lot more of a process than just sticking some bailing wire on there. Anyways, um, so you want to put this fender roll back in. It should just click in here. You, you're going to want to use a flathead and just kind of, it'll pop back in. You just kind of want to pry it back in there. It'll pop in. Put your clip and your 10 millimeter bolt under here back in. Then for this plastic panel up here, once you've gotten this bolt all tightened down and connectors on, you wanna just take this, you gotta line up the front first. Let's see if I can do this on camera. It might be a bit of a pain, but I'll try to. So yeah, it'll, that this might happen to you too. These two corners might not wanna click in, but just simply, just like that, just flex it a little bit. Same thing with this one. Come on. I just can't really see what I'm doing, but can I put the camera down for half a second? Maybe. Maybe I can do this with the camera in my hand. Ugh. Come on. There we go. 
Okay, so that clicked back in. As you can see, it's just sitting like this now. So what you want to do now is just scooch it forward into place. It should scooch in. If hitting on something, I was hitting over here on this little hole here. You just want to make sure that's pushed in. So you want to make sure your holes all line up. And then you want to get, you want to scooch it forward a little bit. The radiator, make sure you don't push on this radiator tank too much. There you go. And you just want to push it forward and slide it towards you. There we go. See those two studs there are now popped in. There we go. Yeah, those two studs there are now popped in. All your holes are lined up. You just want to replace your 10 mils. So again, that's here, 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 and here. These ones are kind of hidden under this rubber seal here, but no big deal. Then clips here, 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 and here. Just want to put all your clips back in, put this back together, and you'll be good to go. All right, thank you guys for watching. This is my tutorial on how to replace horns on a 2009 Infiniti G37 XS. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.